Hey, Sergeant Darby here with Army Signal Training, and today we're going to go over the Cisco IP phone boot process. Uh, in front of you, I have a PowerPoint I put together of the five required steps for the phone to successfully register with the communications manager. So, if you're new to the voice over IP world or really don't know how the phone boots and in what order, I suggest you pause the video, write these down, and, and, and really get to know them. Uh, the first step in the boot process is power. We gotta apply power to the phone. Now whether we do that with PoE, we do that with a power brick which plugs directly from the wall socket to the phone, or we, we use a device called a power injector which is a form of PoE, we have to apply power to the phone. Now I will say in our implementation, majority of the time we use a PoE capable switch. So real quick, I'm going to show you what to be what to look for if your phone does not receive power as expected. Here, I have my Cisco IP phone. It's a 7941, much like the one in the upper right hand corner. And as you can see, although I am getting a registration error, uh, it is receiving power. When I first plug this phone in, it's going to go into what I call Christmas tree mode. So I plugged it back in and you see the red and green lights. That's my little Christmas tree mode. But it's receiving power. Now, on the back of these, these Cisco phones, there's two RJ11, or excuse me, RJ45 ports. One that'll say 10 by 100 or 10 slash 100 PC, and the other one will say 10 slash 100 switch. We need, we need to ensure that when we're plugging the phone into the switch, that we plug it to the switch port. Now, if we accidentally plug it into the PC port, or we, you know, we run the cable and we tell the user, you know, just plug your phone in when you're ready. If they accidentally plug it in the, into the 10 slash 100 port, this is what's going to happen. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because it's not going to apply power to it. So let me move it back over to the switch port. And we have power. All right. So that's the first thing we're going to check. We're going to make sure that the end user or we did not make the mistake and plug it into the 10 slash 100 PC port when we know now that needs it to be in the 10 slash 100 switch port. Okay, next thing that could be wrong, the integrity of the cable, of course, that, that good old physical layer, layer one. So we wanna check the integrity of the category five cable or category six cable, whatever you're using, ensure that the cable's integrity is there and that can sustain the phone. And we're gonna check the switch. We're gonna make sure that the switch is provisioning power for devices and that it has enough power to provision. And the way we do that is, let me pull my switch. Now here I'm using a Cisco 3560 switch. It is PoE capable. Let me clear the screen off for you guys. Right. All right, so I'm gonna issue the show power inline. What this command is gonna do is, is it's gonna give me basically the general output that tells me how much it can support, how much it is supporting, what is being supported. Uh, it's some pretty good information to know, particularly if you have a phone that's not power on, powering on properly. So if I look here, first thing it tells me is, hey, you have 370 watts to provision out. You're currently only using 13.3 watts, and that tells me that I have a remaining of 356.7 watts. The max here tells me, the max column tells me, hey, the maximum wattage I can allocate out is 15.4 watts. Now, that's not because Cisco is limiting it. That is because 802.3 AF standard says that the maximum that you can provision out is 15.4 watts. What did happen though is my phone actually negotiated and said, hey, I don't need 15.4 watts, I only need seven. And oddly enough, this one, same exact model phone, said, ah, I don't need seven, I need 6.3. So, as you can see, although it could run 15.4 watts, and unless told otherwise, that's exactly what it's gonna provision for it, these phones negotiated down to 6.3 and 7.0 watts appropriately. So, we are providing power. That's the command we can use to, to determine that we are, and life is good. We have power. All right.
the second step in a boot up process is that the Cisco switch is going to share with the phone what voice VLAN it belongs to the VLAN ID of the voice network and it uses this uh, it uses the Cisco discovery protocol or CDP to share this information to the phone so after the phone successfully gets power the next thing that happens is the switch informs the phone of what its voice VLAN ID is the next thing that happens after the the phone gets the appropriate voice VLAN ID it now knows what network it belongs to per se and, and where to go to probe for a DCP request so that's exactly what happens the phone then says hey I need an IP address and we use a DACP server whether it's a house on a, a, a Windows server or it is the router itself uh, it's going to request an IP address um, we're not going to go into how to configure a DHCP scope we'll do that in a later video but what I want you to take notice of is this right here option 150 it needs option 150 and an example of that is here on my router show run And here's an example of the DHCP scope I have for my voice network on my home lab. And you know, I got the network statement, the, the default router statement, which we're all probably used to by now. And if you're not, don't worry. Uh, later on, there'll be a micro num nugget specific to setting up DHCP on your router or layer three device. But this right here, option 150, it says option 150 IP 172.21.58.1. The IP address you're putting there is the IP address of your TFTP server. In this case, my TFTP server is the router itself. But it could easily be you know, a separate dedicated device on my network acting as the TFTP server. So that could have been a, you know, a different IP address on the network. But it's, it's telling the phone where to go to pull its files from TFTP. So once it's able to do that, it you know it has the appropriate IP information. It knows the location or at least the IP address of the TFTP server. It's going to contact that TFTP server to download its configuration file. Once it successfully has its configuration file, the configuration file tells it. It the, the configuration file tells it several things, but. The important thing in there that we're going to talk about is it has the IP address or the name of the call manager it needs to register to. So it gets the IP address in that configuration file. It gets the IP address of the call manager it needs to register to and then attempts to register to that call manager. So that is the Cisco IP phone boot process in a nutshell. Like if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to leave your question in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.